Hello everybody, welcome back to another video and in today's video we are going to be doing yet again another unboxing. This unboxing however is another one of my uh, 1 to 200 scale fighter jet unboxings. If you remember back to August 2021 I unboxed quite a few 1 to 200 scale fighter jets and I absolutely fell in love with that scale of aircraft and that specific type of scale of aircraft. Of course 1 to 200 is a massive range, of course I have the A380 and the 747s but these fighter jets, while they are 1 to 200 scale, they've got a lot more in common with the uh, regular 1 to 400 uh, passenger aircraft that I usually collect. Because of course fighter jets are quite small in 1 to 200 scale, these are more similar to the 1 to 400 aircraft I'm used to collecting. And this time around, as this is my second fighter jet unboxing, I've been a lot more selective about the types of aircraft that I've bought. So what I think we're going to do now, as we usually do, I'm going to take this box off to the side and then we're going to get out the aircraft of course one by one we'll go through them in the box and then of course we'll get them out and we'll do kind of a an in-depth review kind of individually and i'm trying to scale this in terms of excitement so i think we'll get out the uh the models that i'm less excited about and then we'll just uh, kind of increase in excitement each time uh, so starting off here we have two more of the fa18s now we have one there and then we have one here uh, now <laughs> if you remember my other unboxing I already have three 1 to 200 F-18s. I do love the F-18 and these are exciting aircraft, but just because I already have three of these, I've decided to put these first. The reason why I've gone for another two is, well, A, I love the F-18. It's one of my favorite fighter jets, but also all the other F-18s that I bought were kind of boring liveries. They were all gray. So these two have some pretty cool liveries that I will go through when we get the models out of the boxes. But after that, moving on from one generation of characters, aircraft to another we have two more of the f-14 tomcats now on the left here we have a real f-14 this is one of the ones that was used of course on the aircraft carriers the u.s aircraft carriers but on the right here we have a fictional f-14 because this is the f-14 uh, that was used during the movie top gun for those of you who haven't seen Top Gun, of course, I'm not going to spoil anything, but it's uh, basically a movie starring Tom Cruise in F-14s. That's pretty much all you really need to know about Top Gun. Uh, but yeah, we have here, this is the uh, actual aircraft used in the movie Top Gun. So then moving these two off to the side to now get on to some of the more exciting aircraft that I haven't got in my collection yet. So starting off here with the uh, US fighter jets, this was a very big gap in the collection. Uh, but now we finally have it. We have have a Japanese Air Self-Defense Force F-15. Now this company that makes these models, uh, they didn't have any US Air Force uh, F-15s. The only country uh, they model these after are Japan. Uh, they have quite a few of the Japanese F-15s that you can buy, uh, but no US F-15s, which I'm not complaining about. It's nice to have a little bit of diversity. Of course, I did recently get the Japanese Air Self-Defense Force C-130 and 1 to 400 scale as well. And this one in particular is a really cool livery so I'm very excited to get this out of the box. Then after that, we actually don't have a fighter jet. We have something that is used on aircraft carriers, but it's not um, its not a fighter jet. And as well, the model isn't actually in the box. I'll explain why it's not in the box uh, later on when we come to open this. We have the US Marines V-22, also known as the Osprey. Now this, for those of you who don't know, is essentially this kind of helicopter plane hybrid that can take off like a helicopter, but then fly like a plane. As you can see, the model isn't actually in the box. I'll come to explain why that is when we go ahead and open this. Well, not really open because it's already out, but when we come to go through this model in detail. But yeah, this is a really, really cool model. And uh, yeah, it's it's. I'm very excited to have my first kind of technically helicopter in my collection. And after that, we say goodbye to the US and hello to the rest of the world because we have some foreign fighters, or not for me anyway, this is this next fighter jet is actually less foreign than the US ones. We have the Royal Air Force Eurofighter Typhoon. This aircraft is pretty much the backbone of Europe. Of course, these are the backbone of the Luftwaffe, the Royal Air Force, the Italian Air Force, and the Spanish Air Force. As well, other air forces around the world do use these Typhoons as well, but I, I just really wanted to get a Typhoon into the collection. Then after that, moving from a very modern Royal Air Force fighter jet to a more classic uh, Royal Air Force fighter jet. Now this one isn't made uh, by one of the regular manufacturers, so it's in a bit of a weird box, but we have 
this, which is an English Electric Lightning. This is a Royal Air Force English Electric Lightning. As you can see, you can't see it inside the box because this is in some jewelry box, but it is a very, very nice model. It's one of the most expensive fighter jets or just aircraft that I've actually bought. This model cost 130 pounds, which is a lot for a fighter jet, but I had to get an English Electric Lightning into my collection. Then after that, moving from the British to the Frogs over the channel, we have one of the older French aircraft. We don't have the Raphael, unfortunately, but we do have the French Mirage 2000. This is currently France's oldest operational fighter jet. They have two fighter jets. They have the Raphael and the Mirage. The Mirage is the older fighter jet that they operate. And this one in particular has a really cool livery that I was very drawn to, so that's why I bought this model. And then moving away from Europe to Russia slash the Soviet Union, we have the Su-27. And we don't just have one, uh, we actually have two. Of course, the Su-27 was, of course, originally built by the Soviet Union, but now, of course, they are operated uh, by Russia. This one on the right is a Russian Su-27, and the one on the left here is a Vietnamese Su-27. And while, of course, I am Western myself, and I don't agree with some of the stuff that Russia and China and all of those countries do, I do have to admit, I, I do love the look of the Su-27. This is known as the flanker, and honestly, outside of the Western world, I think this is the best fighter jet there is. I know there are some new kind of stealthy fighter jets, but this has been proven over time to be a very, very effective fighter jet. Probably the most effective non-Western fighter jet there is. And that concludes all of the models we will be unboxing in today's video. Some very, very exciting fighter jets and other aircraft, as you have seen. And with that, I think we're gonna go ahead now and get out the models in order of how I brought them out of the box. But before we do that, we have a brief visitor. We have a Chinook passing over. So there we go, apart from that, uh, we do have the slight noise of the Chinook in the background if you can hear that, but oh well. Uh, moving on to the F-18s now, so of course the F-18 uh, is the primal naval aircraft for the US. I say naval with a bit of hesitation because these aren't all Navy aircraft, they are Navy and Marines. I kind of meant naval in the terms that these operate navally off of aircraft carriers, and not that they're all actually owned by the Navy if that makes sense. So there are two types of Hornets. There's the regular Hornets, the Legacy Hornets, and then these, which are the Super Hornets. The Legacy Hornets first flew in 1978 before then being introduced in 1983. Uh, they were then retired in 2019 because now uh, the US have the Super Hornets. The Super Hornet first flew in 1995 and then was introduced uh, in 1999 and they're still operational to this day. The US Navy are currently the primary operator of this type of aircraft. The US Navy operate 512. The US Marines then operate 187. And then as well, these were operated internationally. These have been exported to other countries. So Spain outside of the US are the primary operator. Uh, Spain operates 85. And uh, then Canada operates 76. Australia operate 68, uh, Finland operate 55, Switzerland operate 30, Kuwait operate 39, and Malaysia operate 8. I love the F-18, I just love the way it looks, so now we have my fourth and fifth F-18 into the collection, so I'm just gonna go ahead now and open these models. Okay, with that first box open, we have the first F-18 there, and then moving on to the second one here, we have the second F-18. And here we have my two new F-18s. Now these are the tandem seater F-18s and as you can see, these are a little bit more exciting than the plain gray F-18s I unboxed last time. As you can see, both of these have some pretty cool livery features. I will go through this one first here. 
Okay, so starting off at the front here, as you can see, one of the things I love about the F-18 is the landing gear, the way they're just so low to the ground and you can see all the reinforcements because of course, these have to handle those super hard landings onto the deck of an aircraft carrier. So the landing gear on the F-18s are super reinforced. So you can see all these struts here in white, of course, most military aircraft have the landing gear features in white. I don't actually know why that is, but I have noticed that on a lot of military aircraft, all the struts and everything on landing gears, not even just fighter jets, uh, larger ones as well, like for example, the, uh, the C-5, the KC-135, all of those aircraft, the landing gear struts and everything are always white, which is uh, something, as I said, I don't know why they do that, but it's an interesting feature I've kind of picked up. We then have the super long nose of the Hornet there. We have the uh, air intakes all the way back here behind the cockpit of the aircraft. Speaking of the cockpit, here we have uh, the, uh, the front seat and the back seat. We have the red, white and blue stripes along here, which is a pretty cool feature as well as this uh, black painted canopy around there. Moving to the rear of the aircraft now, as you can see, we have those wings. We have three drop tanks on the underside. As you can see, we have the wing drop tanks and then we have the center drop tank as well and we have all the hard points but we only have two missiles one on each end of the wings there and then as you can see we have those divots there which is where the uh, the wings fold up uh, when they're stored onto an aircraft carrier and then of course we have those main landing gears as well and then here at the back, as you can see under here, it says Navy. And then of course we have the engines, the ailerons and the tails here, of course, with the red, white and blue and the insignias and everything on the tail there. Overall, it just looks like a really, really cool model. I love the livery and of course I love the F-18 in general. And then moving from this one, we won't go over the uh, second one in the same amount of detail as we did the first, but we'll just have a look at the livery here. As you can see, this is a, a much darker livery, a lot of black on this aircraft. We have the black tails with with all the uh, letters and insignias and everything. And uh, we also have this kind of, uh, it's like a, a, a banner with some white stars going down the middle with yellow either side. And then we have black uh, painted around the uh, uh, cockpit or canopy of the aircraft there. And overall, if we bring that aircraft here and then we'll put the other one behind it there, uh, these look like two really, really beautiful models as you can see. I've said it more than once already, but I'm gonna say it again. I do I do love the way the F-18 looks. It's such a sleek design. I absolutely love this aircraft. And with that, we're gonna move on to the aircraft that these F-18s replaced. And here we go, these are the F-14. So of course the F-14 is the aircraft the US used on their aircraft carriers before the F-18s came into the picture. We're gonna start with the left one, which is the real uh, F-14 and not the fictional one. Uh, we have uh, this one inside here. I really wanted a gray F-14 just because all the other ones that I've bought so far have had some like camo designs and while those can be cool, I think I just wanted some sort of like plain basic F-14 as well. And so taking the plastic off the top there and the aircraft out of the cradle, here we have that F-14. Putting this one off to the side now and bringing in the uh, second F-14 here, we have the Top Gun F-14. This is actually a really cool livery. Um, I don't know if they actually have any F-14s. I guess they painted one like this for the movies. I don't know if any were kept in this livery or anything like that. But my point is I actually really like the look of this F-14. It almost looks Russian. Like I, I don't know if you guys know any of those kind of baby blue Russian liveries. Uh, this kind of looks pretty similar to that. Of course it's not directly similar but it's just all the colors they use it does remind me of those kind of Russian liveries. And so starting off at the front of the aircraft here as you can see we have the iconic nose of the F-14 with this uh, I believe this is the guidance system. I'm not huge on military aircraft so I don't really know but I believe that's some sort of guidance there on the front there because that always stays down even when the gear is up. Speaking of the gear of course we have that forward landing gear there in the white as well and uh, we have the cockpit with the the tandem seater cockpit. I don't believe there were any single seater F-14s anyway and uh, we have the forward seat there and the rear seat. Moving back of course we have the missiles uh, for the F-14 located just before the wing there. It's a very iconic place for the F-14 to have its missiles because they kind of stick out of the sides. Uh, even when the wing is fully extended 
solid. You can see that those missiles there are always very prominent on the aircraft. Then finally moving to the rear of the aircraft, as you can see we've got those wings, we've got the Navy titles down there. We've got those engines, we've got the tail here with the cool little details on the tail. And then under here, one cool feature that I didn't actually point out on the uh, F-18s, but they have this as well. We have the hook there that extends when of course landing onto the deck of an aircraft carrier. And then overall the uh, Top Gun F-14 is pretty similar as well. Of course it's the same shape, it's just the livery that's different. As you can see, I do really like this kind of light color scheme that they've got on here as you can see. And then of course we do have different uh, weaponry uh, on the uh, each side here as you can see we've got like this red missile almost like a javelin on the side there and then we have this different looking uh, missile on this side and yeah so overall uh, these are two really really nice aircraft I'm definitely glad I've got these in my collection of course as I said at the beginning the F-14 is now a retired fighter jet from the US but these used to operate off of aircraft carriers back in the 80s and the 90s and even going into the 21st century as well it was first flown in 1970 before then being introduced to to the US military in 1974 before then being retired uh, in 2006. It's been used in so many places and wars and conflicts um, including uh, the Balkans, uh, Iraq, the Persian Gulf, Libya, Iran, Somalia and Vietnam. And so yeah overall I'm very happy I now have these in my collection. And then next up here we have the F-15 Eagle. The F-15 is operated by four countries, but for some reason Japan is the only country you can buy a 1-200 to scale model for. The primary operator of the F-15 is of course the US. The US operate 234. Uh, that's in the military, but then also NASA operate three. Japan are the second largest operators. Uh, they operate 200 of these. Then of course Saudi Arabia operate 170 and Israel operate 84. The F-15 was first flown in 1972 and then was introduced in 1976. I'm taking the model out of the box here. We have the F-15 finally in the collection. There were quite a few liveries to choose from, but I found that this one, in my opinion, was the best looking one. I really like the blue on this aircraft. It just makes it so unique. So starting off for the front here, we have the nose of the F-15. We have those cockpit windows there. We have the Japanese Air Self-Defense Force insignia. Uh, we have the air intakes here. Um, a lot more forward than the uh, the F-18s. In fact, these do actually rotate. Um, I don't know in what configuration uh, these ones are in right now, uh, but I know that these do droop down when they're in flight to account for uh, more direct air intake. I think these are slightly kind of bending up there. So I think this is in the takeoff or ground configuration but then when this does get in the air these kind of drop down slightly and of course because of course the the aircraft doesn't exactly fly like it's on the ground it flies with a little bit of a tilt like that so of course the air intakes they fold down to allow more air to get into the engines moving to the rear of the aircraft now we have of course those drop tanks and then we have some missiles under the wings there as you can see we have the blue over the wings and then we have those uh, Japanese insignias on the wings is there as well and then on the tail here we just have some more blue and gray and then we have some uh, numbers just identifying this aircraft but then of course at the rear of the aircraft we have those engines and yeah apart from that that kind of concludes the F-15. Oh, one thing I do also want to mention as well is as you can see in the cockpit there, you can see that little uh, green screen there. That's the uh, that's the HUD of the aircraft. I, I'm really impressed that they added that onto this size of a model. It's a really cool little feature there. But yeah, overall the F-15, I've been a massive fan of the F-15 for years. I love the F-15, I love the way it looks. And so as I say with a lot of my models, but it's just always true, I'm glad to finally add this into my collection. And finally here for the US, we have the US Marines uh, V-22, also known as the Osprey. Uh, you guys will probably know this, it's quite a famous aircraft. And as you can see, it's not actually in the box. Now I had some issues with this model. It is a very complex model. And so the first one that I got, uh, it came broken and it was in a state where I couldn't fix it. Uh, so luckily the aircraft model store, they sent me another one, which is this one. It did also come broken, uh, but it was in a fixable state. These are definitely very, very very 
delicate models, uh, but if you treat them well, they are gonna last. So moving the box off to the side now, we're gonna get out the actual model. And so here we go. This is the V22 Osprey. Now, I did have to attach the props. The props don't come attached to the aircraft in the box. Uh, they come separately and then you've gotta actually attach them to uh, the aircraft yourself. And as well, I have had some issues with the front landing gear there, but everything is now fixed. This is a totally fine model. Another feature is, of course, these tail things came unattached, but that's fine. It's all fixed now. It's in perfect condition. And yeah, here we have the Osprey. The Osprey is such a unique aircraft. This technology has been around for a very long time, but it's only started to be used in the military fairly recently. The first design of the Osprey first flew in 1989, all the way back 30 years ago, over 30 years ago in uh, 1989. However, it was only introduced to the US Air Force, or not the US Air Force, the, the US military, I should say, in 2007. Currently, all three major branches of the military, apart from the Coast Guard, which does technically count as the military, operate these Ospreys. The largest operator is the US Marines, which is this one here. Uh, the US Marines operate currently 236, uh, but they do have 360 orders. And then as well as that, both the US Navy and the US Air Force operate 50 of these as well. So combining everything, the US operate between 400 and 500 of these aircraft. As well as the US, Japan also have uh, these aircraft as well. Not many, uh, they currently only operate two with uh, further one on order. But you know, it's a start, three is still something I guess. And there has been intrigue by other countries as well. Uh, the US Ospreys have operated on both the UK carriers and the French carrier. And there has been some talk about both the UK and France potentially. And I'm talking potentially because this hasn't been confirmed or anything, uh, but there is talk Talk about the UK and France also purchasing this aircraft. Of course, at the moment, the UK are currently using the Merlin helicopters for transport, taking people on and off of aircraft carriers, and as well, radar missions as well. There are some specially fitted Merlin helicopters with radars attached to the side. And then the French are using the E-2s, which funnily enough, the US use as well, but the US use both the Ospreys and the E-2s. But yeah, all in all, this is a really, really cool model. I'm gonna go into detail on this model now. Starting off at the front here, we have the cockpit windows here with the nose we have the camera on the front there and we have the uh, the forward landing gear there. Moving to the middle of the aircraft, we have those props, the huge props. Now these do bend down. I'm gonna try and adjust these, but these are very finicky, but as you can see, these do bend down into a kind of aircraft or no, I shouldn't say aircraft, plane position. So as you can see, when they're flying like a plane, it flies like this with the props extended downwards. But then of course, when it needs to fly like a helicopter, they just kind of uh, rotate upwards and then it can fly very vertically just like a helicopter and land essentially wherever it wants. And then finally here at the rear of the aircraft, here we have a window, the one window on the side of the fuselage there. And we have, I believe this is the US Air Force logo, but I know this is a Marines Osprey, so I don't know why that insignia is there. And we then have, of course, Marines there, the main landing gear down there. And then we have the tail here. And then of course, in here, this is where the entrance to the uh, rear kind of cargo hold would be. A, a door would come down just like any other kind of cargo aircraft. But overall, this is a beautiful and very very iconic uh, model to have in my collection. I'm gonna have a look around to see if there are any more kind of really interesting helicopters out there because I am very intrigued. I would love to get something like a Chinook or an Apache or something like that, but we'll have to see. With that, I'm gonna put this off to the side and we're now gonna move on to some European fighter jets. And here we go. So next up, we have the uh, Royal Air Force Eurofighter Typhoon. I really wanted to get a Eurofighter Typhoon to join my collection, but I didn't want to just get any Eurofighter Typhoon. I specifically wanted to get a Royal Air Force Eurofighter Typhoon because, of course, I am British and I don't yet have a Royal Air Force fighter jet in my collection, so I thought that this would be the perfect opportunity. The Eurofighter Typhoon began development back in the 1990s. Originally, the idea was a bunch of the top European countries would come together to try and create a fighter jet. Originally, the UK, Germany, France, Spain, and Italy were all involved in the Eurofighter project. But then partway through, France actually left the Eurofighter program to develop the Raphael. The Raphael and the Typhoon look very similar indeed, and that's because they have the same origins. 
Netherlands. So as I said, four countries were involved in building the Typhoon and all four of those countries currently operate them. So of course the Royal Air Force for the UK, uh, they are currently the primary operators operating 160. Germany are currently in second, they operate just under 160, I think it's 150, uh, but they do have orders for 180 that haven't all been fulfilled. So overall Germany will be the primary operator of the Typhoon, but at the moment the Royal Air Force actually operate more. Then along with Germany and the UK, Italy operate 96, Spain operates 73, Saudi Arabia operates 72, Kuwait operate 28, Qatar operate 24, Austria operate 15 and Oman operate 12. The Typhoon first flew in 1994 and then was introduced to I believe the Royal Air Force in 2003. In the Royal Air Force this is scheduled to be retired in the year 2040 and it will be replaced by the new Tempest fighter which is scheduled to have its first flight in 2035. But that is a very long time away so we definitely have another confirmed 18 years of Eurofighter Typhoon service for the RAF. This specific one here, um, I couldn't manage to get one of the single-seater Eurofighter Typhoons, so this is one of the training uh, Eurofighter Typhoons. This is one of the tandem-seater Eurofighter Typhoons. They don't actually use these tandem-seater Typhoons in combat, so of course when student pilots graduate from the Hawks, the T1s and the T2s, they then progress onto this aircraft. Being a tandem-seater, the student pilot would be in one seat and the instructor would be in the other, and this aircraft is essentially just for training before then those pilots pilots would then go on to fly the actual single-seater Eurofighter Typhoons in active combat. But as you can see here, we have the Eurofighter Typhoon, the Royal Air Force Eurofighter Typhoon. Um, this doesn't come with any drop tanks, which in my opinion looks a little bit weird. I'm not used to seeing uh, the Eurofighter Typhoon without any drop tanks there. But overall, it looks like a really, really nice model. Okay, so starting off at the front of the aircraft here, now one very common trait of European fighter jets are these uh, forward ailerons that you can see here. These of course help with maneuverability and as I said, uh, these are a very common trait in a lot of European fighters. Uh, the French Raphael also has these a little bit further back and as well the Swedish Gripen has them as well. But apart from that, under there, as you can see, we have the dual air intakes for the engines there. We have the forward landing gear. We then have that very long cockpit. Now I do think the uh, the tandem seater typhoons look weird with this tandem cockpit. I just think it looks too long. The single seater ones look so much more menacing. But then of course we have the Royal Air Force insignia there and then moving back to the wings. Uh, the, the wings with no armament on them. The Eurofighter Typhoon looks absolutely menacing when it's fully loaded with those supersonic drop tanks and all the missiles and everything. It looks like an absolute boss. But then on the other end of the spectrum, when you have have it like this with nothing under the wings it kind of looks a bit dorky then moving to the rear of the aircraft as you can see we have those dual engines at the back there uh, they look very good and then we have the tail with of course the Royal Air Force insignia this is a very old Royal Air Force insignia I mean so the Spitfires had this red and blue on the tail as well and then here we have this badge I guess this is the squadron of this particular Eurofighter Typhoon and then of course we have the rest of the tail with the rudder at the back there and overall I'm very very happy with this model. As I said, I do want to go for another Eurofighter Typhoon, but this time I want to go for a single-seater Typhoon, and there are a bunch of other European models that I do want to get. Of course, I, I would love to get the Raphael. I think the Raphael does look really cool. I want to get a Tornado while those are retired from now the Royal Air Force, and I would like to get one of them. I know they're still in operation with the German and Italian Air Force, so I could get one from either of them. And then as well, I do want to get the Swedish Gripen, which is another really cool fighter jets. But yeah, overall I'm very happy with the quality of this model and as I keep on saying but it's just always so true, I cannot wait to add this to my collection. And moving from a very up-to-date Royal Air Force fighter jet to a not so up-to-date Royal Air Force fighter jet, we have this. Inside this box we have the Royal Air Force English Electric Lightning. Now I have talked to quite a few Americans as of late about fighter jets and I've got into this conversation and I am always shocked at how few Americans 
know about this aircraft. For its day, this is probably one of the best fighter jets to ever be built. It sounds crazy to say, but even going head to head with something like the F-22 Raptor, this fighter jet can even trump that in some aspects. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna go ahead and open this box and then we're gonna get out the model. Now, as I said, this was a particularly really expensive model. Uh, all the other models that I've got today are kind of manufactured by mainstream uh, companies. So of course the models, when they're produced uh, loads, uh, they can drop the price on them. So the average price of one of the other fighter jets is anywhere between 20 and 30 pounds. But this one, I had to drop the bomb on this one. I spent to 130 pounds on this model, but it is an English Electric Lightning. Uh, this is one of the greatest fighter jets of all time. So in my eyes, this is 100% worth it. I do believe this is handmade as well. So uh, it just, it's an absolutely beautiful model. I have opened this before and I absolutely love this model. Uh, it's in some sort of like jewelry box. As I said, it is handmade. So I, I think this is basically what the, uh, the person who made it could get their hands on. It's essentially like an iPhone box the way it opens. And then inside here, we have of course some polystyrene that we can take off the top. I'm gonna to zoom the camera out slightly so you can see. We're gonna grab this polystyrene and take this out of the top. And there we have the English Electric Lightning. Believe it or not, this aircraft is almost turning 70 from its first flight. It first flew in 1954 and then was introduced to the Royal Air Force in 1960. It was then retired uh, 28 years later in 1988. So the Royal Air Force were, of course, the primary operas, but also Saudi Arabia and Kuwait also operated these aircraft. And this was essentially the UK's Cold War fighter jet aircraft. This aircraft could zoom climb up to 60,000 feet in 60 seconds, which of course equates to a thousand feet every single second. And 60,000 feet isn't even this aircraft's server ceiling. The exact server ceiling isn't exactly known, but it is confirmed that this aircraft can fly up to at least 70,000 feet. As I said, this aircraft can compete in some aspects with the F-22 Raptor, which is a modern day fighter, and this is a 70 year old fighter. This can fly higher than an F-22, and it doesn't fly faster than the F-22, but it only flies slower by 150 miles an hour. The F-22 can fly at Mark 2.2, while this can just fly at Mark 2. But again, let me reiterate, this is a 70 year old fighter jet. So that's still damn impressive. This is the only fighter jet in history to successfully intercept the U-2 spy plane. And as well, it's because of this aircraft that the F-35 is known as the Lightning II because this is the original Lightning. And so with that, I think we're just gonna go ahead now and jump into detail on this aircraft. This aircraft essentially looks like a rocket with a person attached. As you can see, the, the main fuselage of the aircraft is just one giant engine. You can see that the nose here isn't actually a nose, that's the air intake of the engine there. And then of course the engine is all the way from here, all the way to the back of the aircraft there. We have the cockpit at the top here, as you can see. We've got the Royal Air Force insignia there. We have the forward landing gear, and then moving back to the rear of the aircraft. We have those wings, of course, uh, in this very iconic kind of shape there. Got the Royal Air Force insignia on the wing there. And then here at the back of the aircraft, as you can see, we have those Rolls-Royce engines, uh, one on top of each other there, and then we have that tail with some of the Royal Air Force insignias. We have the registration, and then we have the rear ailerons there. So overall, I am extremely, extremely happy with how this aircraft has turned out, and more than any other aircraft in today's unboxing, uh, I'm definitely, definitely glad to finally add this to my collection. Then after that, moving across the channel to the frogs. Now we don't have the Raphael, but we do have France's other fighter jet that they currently use. We have the Mirage 2000. The Mirage 2000 first flew in 1978 and then was introduced to the French Air Force in 1984. This is currently France's oldest fighter jets, but they do still have this in service. France have operated 315 of this aircraft, uh, but they have also exported this as well. Uh, so the UAE have operated 67 of these, uh, Taiwan have operated 60, and India have operated 50. And with that being said, I think we're just gonna go ahead now and open this model. Uh, this is, I believe, the smallest fighter jet in today's unboxing. It is surprisingly small how, how small the Mirage 2000 is. But this particular aircraft has a really cool livery, which is why I was attracted to this model. But here we have the very tiny Mirage 2000. 
As you can see, protecting the nose, we have a little plastic uh, container tube type thing there. So starting off at the nose here, we have the very pointy nose of the Mirage there. Uh, one common thing with French fighter jets are the uh, the refueling probe here. It's constantly out. This doesn't retract. This is just always out. And that's the same on the Raphael as well. I don't know why French fighter jets have this. I don't know whether it's just a coincidence that both French fighter jets have that feature. Of course, that's a negative thing because when this aircraft is flying uh, that can affect the drag and everything so it's not the best idea to have that refueling thing constantly out so I don't know why they do that if anybody does know why the French fighter jets always have those out uh, please tell me because I don't know aircraft like the F-35 and the Typhoon they have retractable uh, refueling probes so of course a little flap comes up and then the uh, the uh, probe extends out of the aircraft so I don't know why that is if anybody knows please let me know in the comments but then back here, as you can see, we have the cockpit of the Mirage, we have the air intakes, one on each side, and then moving to the wings of the aircraft, the tiny wings, these are delta wings, of course, but they're really, really slender. And then we have these huge, huge drop tanks underneath the aircraft there, or I don't know whether these are huge or just the aircraft's really small. And then as you can see here, we do have some armament under the wings there, we have a missile under each wing. And then here at the back of the aircraft, this is the main thing that attracted me to this model, we have this really cool French flag on the tail. Of course we have the blue, the white, and the red of the French flag there on the tail and then of course we have the actual French Air Force insignia there with the single lone engine at the back there. But yeah overall a really cool little fighter jets and as I said I would love to get the Raphael to go alongside this so we have both French fighter jets. But apart from that that concludes this model and my European models for today's unboxing and now we're going to head on to Russia. And so next up here we have two of the Su-27s. As I said, I, I do love the look of these aircraft. These look absolutely amazing. I think I do prefer these uh, in their generation over the US counterparts, of course. These are the competition for the F-15 and the F-14. And I do think I prefer the look of these over those aircraft. Of course, there's no bias to how the aircraft actually operates, just in terms of looks and beauty. I do think that the Su-27 looks better. And so we're probably gonna get these both out at the same time, uh, of course, these are the same aircraft, they're just in different liveries. And we're getting out the uh, Vietnamese one first. And there we go, I love the armaments on the underside of that aircraft. Just fully armored, ready to go, and everything that just and looks absolutely beautiful. I love this aircraft. And then secondly, we have the Russian Su-27. This is actually, I believe, quite a new livery. Uh, this is the Russian demonstrator livery, I believe. But inside here we have the Russian Su-27 flanker. So this aircraft here, as I said, is probably one of Russia's best modern fighter jets. This has done very well in exports as well. There are a bunch of countries that these have been exported to. Uh, this first flew in 1977 and then was introduced to the Soviet Air Force in 1985. Uh, while this was, of course, operated by the Soviets, of course, when Russia was founded, the, uh, all those aircraft essentially just changed to the Russian Air Force, so those are the same operators, if that makes sense. Russia operate 354 of these, but also a bunch of other countries do as well. Uh, China have a bunch of these, Angola, uh, Eritrea, Ethiopia, Indonesia, Kazakhstan, Mongolia, Ukraine, Uzbekistan, uh, Vietnam, and believe it or not, even the United States. The United States officially operate two of these aircraft, but of course they are uh, kind of experimental aircraft in the sense that they were, uh, I don't know whether they were stolen or purchased, I don't know how the US got them, uh, but they are now stored in Area 51, and I believe it's, you know, under experimental reasons. We'll probably just go through one of these. Um, I'm probably gonna go for the Russian demonstrator livery just because, I don't know, uh, it's just 50-50, I guess. We're just gonna go through this one. You can see we've got the nose here, the extremely long nose. I mean, the uh, the forward landing gear is like a third of the way down the entire aircraft there. And then we've got the cockpit, of course, there with some insignias and everything. And then we've got this camo livery over the entire aircraft. Moving to, well, I would say the middle, but it's practically the back. We have those wings there. 
As you can see, these aircraft are heavily armed. I believe the Vietnamese Su-27 is even heavily armed. Yeah, as you can see, there are a bunch more missiles on the Vietnamese one there. But there we go. And then, of course, we have those air intakes there. And you can see the entire engines on the bottom here. You can see where the air goes in at the front there. And then you can see those engines at the back. With this really long probe that sticks out the back, I don't know what that is or why that's there. If anybody knows, please let me know. And then, of course, you have those F-15 style rear uh, tails there. They look very good with the Russian star on the back there as well. But yeah, overall, uh, that concludes the Su-27. It's just such a cool aircraft. And I would like to collect some less Western aircraft as well, some Chinese, some Russian aircraft, because I'm not buying these in terms of politics or anything. I'm just going off what looks good. And to me, the Su-27 looks absolutely beautiful. Of course, both China and Russia do now have a stealth aircraft. They have two each. They have a kind of a mainstream aircraft for the Chinese. That's the J-20. And then for Russia, that's the Su-57. And then they do also have two others, which are supposedly, they're still under kind of testing and everything, but they're supposedly carrier operational. Stealth fighter jets that are meant to kind of go head to head with the F-35. Uh, Russia have the Checkmate. They're not gonna put that on an aircraft carrier anytime soon because their aircraft carrier is an absolute death trap. I don't think it even counts as an aircraft carrier. I think it's technically a heavy cruiser with aircraft carrying capabilities. So it technically doesn't even count as an aircraft carrier. Uh, but for the Chinese, that's another story. They do have, I believe, two aircraft carriers on operation at the moment, and they do have, uh, I think, a number of them under construction or planned or anything like that. They even have one that I believe is planned to be bigger than the Gerald R. Ford class carrier at, I believe, 110,000 tons. Don't quote me on that, but I believe that's the case, and they do have their stealthy new fighter jets that's going to be operating off of that aircraft. Uh, I would say fairly soon, but who knows with China. But yeah, overall, I absolutely love these 1-200 to 200 scale fighter jets. I'm definitely going to try and get more, of course, as I have mentioned throughout the video. And there are a bunch of fighter jets that I would like to get. And apart from that, honestly, that concludes this video. Um, I, I'm over the moon with all of these models. They look absolutely great. None of them really came broken. I had some problems with the Osprey, but overall, it turned out fine. And yeah, um, that does conclude this fighter jets unboxing. This has been in the making for a very, very long time. So I'm finally glad that I can finally get this out to you guys. And yeah, apart from that, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and I will see you in the next one. Bye.